Let's take a look at the problem. A mine shaft has an ore elevator hung from a single braided cable of diameter 2.5 centimeters. So that's about an inch. That's a rather stout cable. But as we can see down here, it's going to be supporting a significant weight, so that makes sense. The cable is also pretty sturdy. Young's modulus of the cable is 10 times 10 to the 10th newtons per square meter, and that's reasonable. It sounds like it's a steel cable. When the cable is fully extended, the end of the cable is 800 meters below the support. How much does the fully extended cable stretch when 1,000 kilograms of ore is loaded into the elevator? So let's go ahead and prepare. Let's go ahead and set up the problem. And there's a couple of things we do. First, we're going to sketch out the physical situation. We're going to identify some relevant variables and do a couple preparatory calculations. So for starters, let's do a sketch. We have a long cable, and I'm going to signify that by having a little break in here. And there's an ore elevator, which is suspended from it. And initially, it starts out with a length of 800 meters. Okay, so here's our length. And at the start, we have a length of 800 meters. Then, we add an extra 1,000 kilograms of mass to the elevator, and it stretches a small amount. In the amount that it stretches, we're going to call delta L. And delta L is something that we're trying to find in this problem. Well, this is a basic problem having to do with elasticity, and we need to know some properties of the cable. One property is the Young's modulus that's given. Another property of the cable that we need to know is its area. And the area of the cable is just pi r squared. We're going to assume that it's a, it's a circular cable, and we're given the diameter, so that makes sense. Pi r squared. Well, we're not given the radius. We're given the diameter. The diameter is 2.5 centimeters. So the radius is half of that, 1.25 centimeters, or 0 0.0125 meters. Okay, so we can calculate what the cross-section area of the cable is, and if we do that, we get 4.91 times 10 to the minus fourth meters squared. And we're going to keep an extra significant figure because this is an intermediate stage in the calculation. So... We have the length of the cable. We're looking for how much it stretches. We know the cross-section area of the cable. And the cable stretches because there's an additional 1,000 kilograms of ore that's loaded into the elevator. Now, we don't really worry about how much the elevator weighs. We don't worry about how much the cable weighs. We want to know the additional stretch with this additional force. And if I put an additional mass into the car to make the cable stretch, the cable has to provide an upward force, and the upward force the cable has to supply is just equal to the mass of what's loaded into it. Well, the mass of what's loaded into it is 1,000 kilograms, so the weight is equal to 9,800 newtons. So the force that the cable has to provide is 9,800 newtons, that additional force is going to produce a certain additional stretch, and that's what we're trying to solve for. Well, this is a classic elasticity problem, okay? So when we're doing problems with elasticity, we have a cable that stretches because of an additional force. We use this relationship, F over A, the force divided by the cross-section area, is equal to Young's modulus times the amount of the stretch divided by the length of the cable. That's our basic relationship. And we know everything in this problem. We know the length of the cable. We know the cross-section area. We know the force that's applied to it. We know Young's modulus. The only thing we don't know is the change in length of the cable. That's what we're trying to find. Well, the change in length of the cable, let's rewrite this relationship. The change in length of the cable is just going to be the force the cable supplies times the length of the cable divided by the cross-section area of the cable times Young's modulus. And we can do a quick check. Big force, big stretch. Long cable, a lot of stretch. Stouter cable, if this got bigger, I'd expect a smaller stretch. Bigger Young's modulus means less stretchy, and so I'd predict a smaller stretch. So this equation seems reasonable. And in fact, we have everything we need in this equation. We know the additional force. It's 9,800 newtons. We know the original length of the cable. That's 800 meters. 
We know the cross-section area of the cable. We calculated that to be 4.91 times 10 to minus 4th meters squared. And we also know Young's modulus. Young's modulus for this cable is 10 times 10 to the 10th. And the units are newtons per meter squared. Now, one of the reasons for including units here is so we can check ourselves. I've got meters squared here that cancels with meters squared here. Newtons here cancels with newtons here. So my net result is going to be a number in meters, which is correct because we're looking for a length. And the change in length, if I put numbers in and I calculate this out, is 0 0.16 meters, which we can rewrite as 16 centimeters. That's the stretch of the cable. Now, 16 centimeters is a bit more than half a foot, so that, that seems sort of surprising. Let's do an assessment to see if that's true. It's an 800 meter long cable, okay? And it stretches by 0.16 meters. So it goes from 800 meters to 800.16 meters. The stretch is 0.16 meters divided by 800 meters. That is an amount of the stretch that's less, that's a, I'm sorry, that's about 0.02%. So that's a very, very small fractional stretch. The additional length of the cable is relatively small. And we expect that to be true. If it's stretched, you know, um, a significant amount compared to its length, you're getting up towards the point where the cable might be breaking, and we don't want that. So this number, it seems large. But it just seems large because the cable is long. The cable is 800 meters long. That's nearly a kilometer of cable. So the stretch seems big, but identifying it as a fractional length, not so much. We also checked ourselves because we have our units worked out correctly. Our basic relationship makes sense. And so the net result, though surprising, is likely to be accurate. And so we can take this one and report it as our final answer.